It, it's a pleasure uh, to be here at the launch uh, of the Labour Yes to AB campaign. Uh, today I want to explain why the alternative vote will help us build a fairer and better politics. Uh, and I want to say straight away, I respect those in our party who are against change, but I think they're wrong and I disagree with them and I want to explain tonight why. I believe a yes vote to AB is the best way to be consistent with Labour's history of campaigning for change, our wish for a more accountable and democratic country, and our mission to build a better politics. My support for, yes, for a yes vote is because I believe AB is a fairer system. But let me also say that my support for AB says something about the kind of Labour Party I want to build. Willing to reform our politics and to take political reform seriously and not to see it as a marginal issue, to reach beyond our party, and to never settle for the argument for the status quo. And we have with us tonight somebody who's actually been one of the longest standing supporters for change in our electoral system, and that is Neil Kinnock. He does such a fantastic job for our party. And Neil, thank you for everything you do. launch has been a long time coming. A long time coming because extending well before Neil's time as leader, contrary to what some people will tell you, actually campaigning for the alternative vote has been a part of Labour's traditions. In 1918, nearly 100 years ago, Labour's leader led Labour MPs into the division lobbies in support of the alternative vote. 80 years ago, Another former leader of our party, the Labour Home Secretary J.R. Clines, launched a bill to introduce the alternative vote in 1931. And Clines told MPs then, our system has been good, but good must give way to better. And sadly, when the national government was formed a few months later, the chance for reform was lost. Now, I don't want to pretend there's been no progress in our politics since then. I gather a debate at the time uh, was about whether it would favour a privileged few over the many to allow voters to be taken to the polls in motor cars. So things have uh, moved on. But, but let's be honest about this. The political system at Westminster has been stuck in neutral for too long. Outside the Chamber of the Commons, we've made great steps forward. In government, we've delivered three evolution, <coughs> Scotland and Wales. We created the London Mayor, the first London Mayor, Ken Livingstone and we helped build to devolve government for Northern Ireland. And these were all huge changes. But let's also be candid about this. A strange timidity has affected us when it came to the House of Commons. And there have been many justifications for our inability to challenge the status quo. The conservatism of the House of Lords, the need to focus on the economy, opposition from other parties, our own internal debate. Now, all of them were seen as good reasons to put off change. But let's be frank about this, they are not good enough. And today, again, we hear arguments for ignoring the case for reform. We all know the damage that is being done to our communities and the fact that this government is cutting too far and too fast and causing devastation up and down the country. And even as reformers, we say that obviously those are more immediate concerns for families up and down the country. Today, unemployment reached a 17-year high, and it is right that our focus as a party is on the local elections, the Scottish elections, and the Welsh elections. And we will campaign in every part of the country, telling people this Conservative-led government is wrong and must be voted against at these elections. But we have a referendum on the 5th of May. We might not have sought it on this date, but we have it. And the question then is whether we take a stand as people. And we have to take a stand on this issue. Because as my brief recitation of the history shows, these opportunities don't come along very often. And we've got to seize that moment, in my view. Now, why do we need the alternative vote? I think there are three reasons, and this is a case for reform that I want to make. First, because of the state of our politics and the way it needs to change. Second, because it is a better 
fairer system. And third, because I think the alternative vote can help improve the way politics is conducted. And I just want to go through each of those arguments in turn. But let's start with our political system. We want to get back into government. And we know the urgency of us getting back into government. But we know something else as well, that the sources of discontent in our political system go deeper than this Conservative-led government. And we should be frank about that. If you look at the turnout at general elections, it has been falling consistently over the last 30 or 40 years. Many people see Westminster as remote and out of touch. And even though our membership has grown by 50,000 since the general election, something I'm incredibly proud of, membership of political parties is far lower in the past. Now, there are many reasons for this discontent with politics. And changing the electoral system is not a panacea. But it is a change that we can make, and that's why I think we should seize it. Now, why will the alternative vote help us to change our politics? I think for a very simple reason. By having more voters counted, more votes counted as part of our system, it will mean that politicians take more voters seriously. It will encourage candidates to appeal to a broader range of voters and to understand a wider range of concerns. Politicians should never be insulated from the people they seek to represent. And this will open up the electoral battleground. So I ask people on May the 5th, when they make this decision, to ask themselves one simple question. Are they happy with the condition of British politics? If the answer is no, then people should seize this moment for change. The alternative vote will make votes fairer for one simple reason, as I said. It will make more people's votes count. And when more votes count, politicians have to count on more voting. <coughs> And at the same time, and this is why I'm attracted to AB, it keeps the constituency link. And incredibly importantly, as all of us who are members of Parliament will know, because it does mean that voters can <coughs> contact with their MP, can berate their MP, can demand change from their member of Parliament. So the reform case for AB, in my view, is simple. If you want more voices to be heard, if you want more votes to count, then people should vote yes on May the 5th. But the case for AB goes beyond that, in my view. It doesn't just create a fairer and a better politics. It changes the way, it can change the way our politics works. Many of our Labour parties ran fantastic campaigns at the last general election. When we placed ourselves firmly in the community, we were sometimes able to overcome a huge national swing against us. And we've got to campaign on every street, in every neighbourhood, between now and the next general election. But let's be clear about this. Under AV, there will be an instruction. Our candidates will have to knock on more doors, make more phone calls, listen more carefully to criticism and reach out. And it will make us more likely also, in my view, to be open and straight with the electorate about what we think of other parties. And this is a really important point. One of the things that turns people off politics is exaggerated disagreement. Now, nobody needs to tell us how awful this, co this Conservative-led government uh, is. But the problem about our system is there's no incentive for anyone to tell anything else about other parties than how awful they are. Even candidates who agree on some issues have to pretend they oppose on every issue. Now, there are enormous differences about where we take our country. But I think we have to abstract from this moment and think, what kind of politics do we want to build for the long term? Do we want to build a politics where actually politicians have to reach out more and have to be honest about disagreements and agreements with other parties? And I think the alternative vote will help make that happen. It will put pressure on politicians to be more inclusive to be more active in communities and to reach out to those who disagree. 